We have a mission here. You know, Bay State Health has a mission, and that mission involves our community. Addiction and substance use disorder is a very hot topic now. The opiate crisis, everyone talks about it, and a lot of people have personal experience and a lot of um, embedded stigma. We know that for the last decade at least, the opioid use disorder in pregnant women um, has been increasing. Um, so babies in the past who were born physiologically dependent on opioids and needed treatment for it would uh, of necessity come to the NICU because the nursery is not equipped to give them the medications that they need. The rooming and program at Bay State currently allows the families impacted by opioid use disorder to stay with their baby during the phases when we are monitoring for neonatal abstinence syndrome and in case the baby does need treatment for the uh, withdrawal syndrome, the babies can get that while they are being cared for by their own parents. Being able to be held by their parents, doing skin-to-skin -skin, uh, care, breastfeeding, um, just providing that nice, calm, quiet environment which is not overstimulant to the babies who are already going through um, lack of self-soothing skills. When we started, this was a pilot project supported through the um, Health Policy Commission grant. There were hurdles that we had to overcome. Some of them were simply geographic, like where are we going to do this? Uh, what rooms do we have? Um, the other things were um, more around staff there was a lot of addiction education that I had to provide for them. I had to educate them about the skill sets, about the assessments, about the medications. The rooms that made most sense were the rooms up here in Vesson 2. We had support from the hospital leadership. The nursing team on Vesson 2 has really now taken to heart um, the program because they've seen successes through it. And none of this would have been possible without a lot of uh, support from the critical team members of which I uh, have to say that the social services team members have been vital. Having that one core social worker who can interact with the moms to be able to A, make them aware of all the resources available to them, that then helps them maintain their recovery. These are some people with incredible strengths. So they have faced adversities, challenges, traumas that we may not see in the general population. So. We want them to be met with an environment that will partner with them, that will um, support their strengths and help them move forward into having a healthy family and a healthy life. Any mom who comes in, we have a conversation about referral to um, a recovery coach. So that's someone who's in long-term stable recovery, who acts as a mentor and um, will follow them not only through their care here, but back into the community. I have worked with these women, I've been in their shoes, and I'm there to walk them through whatever needs that they have. Since the program has um, been in place since January 2017, when we looked at our outcomes, we were very pleasantly surprised because in the past we had about almost 80 to 90 percent of our babies who needed some sort of treatment for their neonatal abstinence syndrome. And we've been able to drop it down to about 45, 50 percent, which is a big drop. Um, more importantly, more and more moms are able to breastfeed their babies, more babies are going home to their own biological families, and the length of stay for the treatment uh, when we compare our rooming in moms or rooming in infants with our um, NICU-treated infants, it's half the duration. We know now through the opiate crisis that it touches all walks of life, that nobody is exempt, and that it could be any one of us. This is our community, these are our families. 